the Canadian blood, blood bank is in a constant state of desperation for the lack of blood donated to them annually. Only 1 in 60 Canadians donate blood. The numbers are too low to have discrimination and judgment towards the gay community. Stereotyping that men who have sex with men with uh, have HIV removes a, a big number of possible donors that the blood bank can't risk. The Old Testament needs to be removed from the donation laws and needs to be revised for testing while donating. that these restrictions are in place. Historically, the gay population has been a bit more um, more affected by diseases like HIV and AIDS. And remember, like while yes, there is like um, blood banks are hurting for more blood, donation is about the donees first and foremost, not the donators. Like um, if you donate blood to help people, it, it'll hurt people well then you shouldn't for that time period. And gay people aren't entirely barred for, for, from donating either. As long as they don't have sex for at least one year, they can donate. It's fine. It, it's just HIV is very high risk. Um, you, can't detect, uh, you can't detect it for about four weeks. And even then, if they can't detect it then, they'll have to test you again three months later. It's a very sneaky disease. and. We want to protect donors against it. And that's all. Okay. <clears throat> uh, according to Canada Blood Services, uh, blood in inventory for Canada, less than 400,000 people donate. Uh, demand for blood is at an all-time high with an aging population. More aggressive medical treatments, sophisticated surgeries, a shrinking donor base and increasing population due to baby boomers uh, retiring. Is, um, up to 50 donors are needed to help just save one person who was seriously hurt in a car crash, uh, up to five donors to save someone who needs uh, cardiovascular surgery, and up to eight donors a week to help someone going through treatment for leukemia. Um, another big factor of this is the fact that donated blood doesn't last very long. Um, platelets from the blood last for about five days. Uh, red blood cells expire after 42 days. Blood uh, plasma expires after just one year, um, and this is all according to Canada Blood Services. Uh, in August of 2016, uh, Canada switched from a five-year window of having to need uh, that you can't have sex with a man uh, into just one year. But uh, this actually falls in line with Great Britain and Australia. But in South Africa, a country who has a way worse situation with AIDS, theirs is only just six months. Uh, that you, you have to wait as a time period. And the point I would like to make is it's actually time. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm here personally to <coughs> represent over 1.3 million Canadian openly gay men who are HIV negative and unable to donate blood. Uh, most men uh, who actually have sex with men are not identifying as gay. In a 2013 study in Ontario found that 10% of straight males admit to having sex with the same sexual activities, and almost 80% of them would not reveal their sexual activities with the same sex to other people in their lives for fear of uh, discrimination and abuse. Um, over 50% of the participants reported that uh, having sex with other males was too embarrassing to share with others in their lives, and 63% of them would openly lie about it. So saying that gay men are the ones that are spreading the HIV is discrimination because it's actually more so straight males. Um, HIV is spread through more people experimenting inhibition, disorientation, and unprotected sex. Because for some reason people still think that you can't tr transmit the disease within the same sex. Um, uh, Canada is still using a behavior-based screening technique which is discriminatory discriminatory method of screening. Dr. Paul Goldenberg, uh, director of the AIDS Research Institute of the University of California and San Francisco, um, said that the policies requiring gay men to stay celibate for 12 months donating blood was not really supporting the facts. His testing methods uh, against uh, the Blood Society of Canada are amazingly accurate. You don't miss infected people. The window for exposure to testing positive is just a short few days, where the Canadian Blood Society's website said that 
testing was spotty and that the camino was picked up when the research for AIDS says that. You were saying about um, your statistics there for um, sadly or four point something. Oh, I'm sorry. argument. I just like to say that um, well those who engage in homosexual behaviors are treated differently from actual gay men. Like as you said, you have to be twelve months celibate if you uh, if you identify as gay to um, to donate blood, but there are conditions in place to you know test against this stuff. For instance, when donating blood you and of nine other donors of blood are, are, are basically taken together, tested together, and then if they find HIV in any of this, all ten donors are basically, well, they're thrown out. And all of them are put on a ban. This protects against, you know, ha ha having your identity leaked in case you have this disease. It protects privacy. And it's treating everyone the same. It's not just discriminating against gay people here. So there are multiple reasons for deferrals, for waiting periods for um, uh, blood donation, and that's not, it's not just singling out uh, just that one denomination, really. It's, you have a de uh, deferral period if you had a piercing, you have to wait six months. Um, if you've undergone another tra uh, blood transfusion, you have to wait a year. Um, so that's not the only reason that they <coughs> use for deferrals for um, that. And I'm confused, but what, uh, if you guys are... I'm um, arguing whether the deferral should be removed, that the people should be able to donate in right away, then um, I would say that the, you, you should pay attention more to the technology used here. Is that, um, mo especially that the older technology is being used in third world countries where the AIDS is really a problem. Um, the window period is, is larger with that older technology, so the, the year waiting period it makes a lot of sense in those areas. Also, um, another thing, the reason that this is actually started in the first place was um, in the, um, what's that? Yes, in uh, 1983, uh, it was, there was an epidemic of AIDS, and uh, during that time is when this was actually started. So uh, back then, more than 14,000 people acquired the disease from blood transfusions before the donated blood were tested for HIV starting in 1985. So just in those two years, so it's 14,000 people. So there's a reason that this, these restrictions are <coughs> okay. For the testing of the nine, um, and saying that it's not always like coming up right away, uh, the window for exposure testing positive is actually just a short few days, so it should be with, a with newer testing methods, with yeah. new technology, and which is available in third world countries, where uh, it's actually a problem. Yeah. And can't really let know. Um, but you can actually go to a health clinic and get a 20-minute 20, 20 uh, test that includes pre-counseling, uh, receipt of your results, and a post-test counseling. And your results within the next 24 hours, which the blood bank does not accept as a legitimate receipt of the so health that's, against that's it. So that's available in Canada, though. So what would you say about people that well, don't have we're, that counseling? We're available. debating in Canada. Yeah. Um, if you'd like to donate to United or debate the United States, that's great, because I have one on the Florida tax, when 54 people were shot and murdered and their friends were not able to donate blood because they had had sex within the last 12 months. But actually in the United States, they are banned completely from donating blood. So even though all of those people were clean of HIV AIDS, uh, they were not able to save those people, which was tested later in the hospital that they could have been safe with the donations that were given. I don't, I don't exactly believe that's true because I got my stats from the Center of Disease Control, which I believe the, the United States also follows. It it stated that gay men still aren't banned outright. Like there is the, the you know year long waiting period, but that's still there. And again, it is sad that um that like the like, like victims 
of Aurora couldn't get blood for, for, for 400 gay sisters and brothers. But again, these restrictions were put in place to protect them first and foremost in case of getting HIV. We should be putting protection on people who are needing the blood and neglecting 1.7 million <coughs> possible donations from the blood bank is something that they really shouldn't be neglecting. So having a better testing method should be something that they are more aware of and do more research on because they've only spent half a million dollars on research on testing for HIV when they spend more money on, or about four times more money on staffing. But it makes more sense to wait the technology to be enabled for us to take off the waiting time. There's litmus paper test technology has improved to the point where we can test it on paper. Yeah. Those aren't always accurate though. Like we want full accuracy when it comes to the blood for our donies. We don't want anyone access um, accidentally getting HIV or any other sexually transmitted disease from these. But, uh, the thing is, anyone can have AIDS. Like, it's not limited to just... And, it, and, no, and it's not just towards that. There's deferrals towards um, people in polyamorous, polyamorous uh, relationships as well. Not just... For, well, um, I will quote Dr. Paul Volferding. The testing methods for HIV are amazingly accurate. We don't miss infected people. The window for exposure testing positive is a short few days. You're right. The, 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 um, but according to the Canadian Blood Bank, they miss a lot which is something they should maybe look into in further testing and improving their technology <coughs> rather than spending on advertisement. The statistics in this whole area is pretty mixed up because um, there was an estimated 11 to 12 percent HIV prevalence in homosexuals before, and that was determined to be 0.25 percent. You're right, the number has gone way down, but it's um, it's only recently caught up with like statistics, right? Like the, how, how it used to be, I think it's justified for the, um, the risk. So I think that you know, prior to now, when they are changing it, which is good, that it was good that they had those uh, restrictions in place then. And another fact, there are many blanket, well, there are blanket bans in place for many things. For example, if you spent more than three months in the uh, United <coughs> Kingdom between the 1980s and 1996, you can't donate. Reason being that mad cow disease was rampant during that time period. Donation is also res uh, restricted if you got a tattoo of it for about 12 months due to needle risks and the disease risks from that. That's not what we're talking about though. We're not talking about mad cow, we're talking about no, should gay men no, be allowed to no, but this, If I was wanting to donate blood to my sister who's in the hospital dying of something, I wouldn't be able to because I'm in a long-term relationship no, and I've had sex with men in the last 12 months. So if I wanted to save my sister and I was the only blood type, she would die. So that's not fair even though I'm HIV clean. But this is a direct correlation. I mean, HIV is a disease. Mad cow is a disease. I am showing you guys that that the same string net regulations are applied to others, and you guys are are, are arguing that it's only applied to gay men. It's not. Ev everyone here is mostly created. But that's our debate. Yeah, we're not talking. We're talking about should gay men be allowed to do it? Because right now they are not. If you walk in and you go and you hit the box and they say yes to have you had sex with a man in here, they won't even let you donate. Okay. You cannot to let gay men donate blood is the fact that we just need it. Canada Blood Services is in need of blood now more than ever. What if, your fr uh, if a friend or a family member needed blood but there wasn't any available? Um, we are saying no to an entire demographic of people who are willing to donate blood but can't get over superstition. Not every gay man has AIDS. Why not just test them just like everybody else and let them help their community? And we are here to protect donees and, well, again, gay men aren't all banned. As we said before, they are put under the same conditions and trials that, that, that even heterosexual couples and such have to go through. It's all for protection. Gay men can donate blood in some cases. Okay.